let's look at some easy tricks and easy hacks to lower your blood sugar incredibly fast. These are things you can do throughout the day. Um, maybe you can do after the meal, but the first thing is just going for a walk before, during, or after eating. This can be as potent to keep your blood sugar levels in check as metformin. And metformin is a drug that is taken by individuals who are diabetic um, or sometimes even individuals who are not diabetic. This is kind of the new thing that's coming on the scene. Um, but essentially, uh, it's as effective as that blood sugar lowering medication from taking a walk before, during, or after. And you might be wondering, during a meal? What? Um, I will sometimes get on my treadmill and put it at a really low speed and just start walking and just start walking. Um, usually I don't have a huge meal, right? Like big steak and potatoes, but it's like a, a wrap or some fruit with yogurt, right? Um, when I do this, I know that I'm keeping my blood sugar levels pretty stable throughout the thing because a lot of that food I'm eating is going right into uh, the exercise, quote unquote, or the, the physical activity that I'm doing right then. On top of that, drinking 8 to 16 ounces of water, just boom, right off the bat, no problem, can actually help to keep your blood sugar levels in check. So if this is something where if you are really, really high on blood sugar, just pounding back some water, not too much, you don't want to uh, go through water intoxication, but just 8, um, ideally probably 16 ounces of water will lower your blood sugar pretty quickly. Um, when you are eating a meal that's high in carbs make sure to just eat other foods with it when you combine other foods together with a high carb meal you are actually uh, lowering the overall effect that that carb will have on spiking your blood sugar so instead of just eating a potato you would ideally eat a potato with some uh I should say like non-starchy vegetables, so carrots or broccoli, and maybe some protein. Because not only is that fiber from the non-starchy vegetables going to lower your blood sugar and keep it in check, but also that protein is, when combined with the non-starchy vegetables and that carb, is going to greatly diminish the effects that it has on your overall blood sugar. So. Um, on top of that, if you are eating all of those things together, if you just eat your vegetables and your protein first and then your carbs last, you're really, really, really going to lower the overall blood sugar spike. And, you know, this isn't something that sometimes a lot of people want to do because they like the taste of all these different things together. And I get that. So if you are eating those things together, try to literally eat them together instead of what most people do is if they're eating um let's say they have potatoes a lot of people go for the carb first because that kind of tastes the best um and they'll leave you know just a little bit of veggies in their corner and uh maybe they'll get to that maybe they'll, they'll have those veggies um sometimes they don't but um, veggies first is a really really good hack also just de-stressing uh if you're cortisol levels, your stress hormone levels are chronically elevated. This will tell your body it needs to liberate energy. And when you are constantly needing to liberate energy, guess what? That literally is blood sugar um, getting raised. Your body is saying, hey, we need energy, energy, energy. We need to be alert because we're stressed right now. That's going to greatly increase your blood sugar. So um, de-stressing and doing things like uh, meditation, um, you can just talk to a friend any way that de-stressing um, works for you and works easily in your life is a great way to uh, lower your blood sugar intermittent fasting this is a really cool one so if you're not familiar with intermittent fasting intermittent fasting is essentially where you only are eating about eight hours of the day for most people they'll do a 16 hour fast in an eight hour feeding window uh, so how this usually looks for a lot of people is their feeding window will usually be about 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. Maybe it'll be about 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. There's no really magical number about this. It's just the fact that they're skipping their first meal. They are not eating when they first wake up in the morning. And that is incredibly crucial because a lot of times when people wake up in the morning and they eat, they eat 
high sugar stuff. They eat a muffin with some orange juice or some oatmeal with a banana and no protein. And when all this is done together, you're literally setting your day up for failure from the beginning because you're spiking your blood sugar, which can then lead to crashes and ups and downs and back and forth throughout the entire rest of the day. So um, when you are thinking about intermittent fasting, intermittent fasting is a way that your body can get used to actually monitoring your blood glucose levels without eating food. So you're giving yourself a break in your digestive system, but it's also really cool too because your body is going to need to then tap into your fat burning stores um, for energy and it's going to become more metabolically flexible where it can use fat very easily. It can also use glucose very easily. And after you do this for a long time, you'll notice you can go longer without eating food and you won't even really feel like it. Uh, and at times you might actually feel more energetic, which I think is a super neat thing that can come from it. Um, on top of that, uh, one tablespoon of vinegar uh, in a small glass before every meal. This is something that, of course, would not really taste the best, but hey, maybe you're into that type of stuff or you just, just sit back. Um, but vinegar or apple cider vinegar, sometimes people like that. Um, both of those have some pretty decent uh, data on keeping your blood sugar levels when you're um, about to eat a meal pretty consistent and um, not spiking it too much so a little bit of vinegar goes a long way uh, and then starting the day savory uh, so when you start the day savory this essentially means that you are eating something like eggs and maybe some avocado for breakfast or you are eating um, some chicken breast with some cheese and maybe a little bit of uh, some greens for breakfast uh, those are just a few examples, not an exhaustive list, of course. But when you start the day savory, you're starting out with your day being a good constant stream of blood glucose, not too much, but it's a constant stream with that little bit of meal. Um, that's not going to raise your blood sugar too much, which will keep your energy good throughout the day and also keep your blood sugar levels more stable. Because if you think about it, when you eat something that's really high in sugar, you spike it. You spike your blood sugar and then it goes down you crash you feel tired so you're going to want to eat more to spike crash spike crash and then your sleep is all messed up and then essentially this is the uh, hamster wheel that a lot of people are spinning on for their entire life and they can't get out of so sometimes just eating a savory breakfast to start out the day is one of the hacks you can do um, and i should say for all of these two you don't need to do all of them it's kind of finding what works the best for you so I don't start my day savory. I eat some Greek yogurt with a fruit. I don't do the tablespoon of vinegar in a glass before every meal, but I do intermittent fast. I usually uh, wake up at about 6.30 to 7 every morning, and then I don't eat my first meal until about usually between 10 and 11, sometimes noon or even longer. Uh, so I'm fasting at least 14 to 15 hours every day. And um, I should say intermittent fasting. So I skip my breakfast, basically. I don't eat right when I wake up. Um, I walk a lot throughout the day. And I also usually try to walk when I'm eating those smaller meals. Uh, when I'm eating my meals, I usually eat vegetables first and then protein after. Uh, I try to combine all my meals and I try to limit eating naked carbs or just carbs by themselves unless I am about to go work out and know that all of that energy from those carbohydrates are going to get shuttled directly into my muscles. So um, again, I do a few of these. I don't do all of them though because some of them I just don't wanna do. Um, and I think it's about finding the ones that work the best for you. So go ahead and give this video a like if it provided some value from you. Uh, and feel free subscribing to our channel as we help individuals of all abilities improve their overall health and knowledge of the gym regardless of where they are currently at in their overall fitness journey.